Hi, I'm Evan Dorn from Caltech. I'd like to thank the NDLTD for presenting me with this award and giving you, me this opportunity to talk about my research and my thoughts about electronic media and scientific publication. My thesis was an attempt to answer the question of how do we go about finding extraterrestrial life? Um, but more importantly than just finding extraterrestrial life is how do we find extraterrestrial life without making any assumptions about its chemistry? So for an example of what I mean by that, imagine if we scooped up a handful of soil on another planet and we sifted through it for chemical analysis and we were looking to see if it had any DNA in it. That would be a humongous mistake because if it were life on another planet that had evolved separately from ours, it might use something entirely other than DNA for genetic material, in which case we would miss it entirely if we were looking for DNA. So we'd like to have some sort of analysis we can perform on the chemistry that will find any life that's present regardless of the particular molecules that it's made out of. And I think we can. Um, the first part of my thesis was a meta-analysis of 50 years of geochemistry data. So many of you may not know what a meta-analysis is, but it's a growing t trend in scientific and medical publication where people will combine the results of many previous studies, combine all of that raw data into one large data set in order to produce a stronger statistical signal and higher confidence in the result. So in my case, I did a meta-analysis of geochemical studies on amino acids and fatty acids across 50 years of study on both life-like and organic sources of chemistry and non-life-like and inorganic sources of chemistry. So in my case, it was very fortunate that geochemists have a history and a trend of publishing their raw data at the end of their papers. So they'll have their five-page papers with a few figures that make it easy to understand the results, but then there will be essentially a five-page spreadsheet at the end with the raw data, which is very useful because it uh, enables you to analyze their results and more importantly, enables another scientist to come by 30 years later and use those data for something entirely different. So, for example, some of the papers that I used um, were originally studying the decomposition of leaf matter in Hudson Bay. Um, I was able to take that and use that for an entirely unforeseeable study from the point of view of the original author looking for extraterrestrial life on other planets because it served as a good example of terrestrial life. Um, so because it's nice to be able to verify the data and because we want to be able to reuse data in other ways, it's important for scientists to include their raw data. Unfortunately, very few scientists actually do this. However, with the advent of electronic publication, this is becoming possible because the large data set files that are part of many scientific studies can be included as electronic components of, uh, of, the, of the paper. Now, I've tried to give back to the community by doing the same thing with my thesis. Now that I've compiled 50 years of geochemical data, I have included that compiled data set in my thesis, which allows somebody to not only verify my thesis, but then take that data set, add more things to it, and do future analyses that are things that probably I could never imagine as well. The second part of my study took the results that I'd found in looking at the difference between the non-life and the lifelike chemistry and attempted to see if that statistical difference was really a universal biosignature. In other words, is that something that all life will do regardless of, of whether it's from Earth or uses some other chemistry from around another star? Um, to test this, we'd of course like to test this signal against another example of life a non-terrestrial example of life, but of course we don't have one. Um, this is the only planet we've really studied in detail and this is the only example of life that we know of so far. So in the absence of an extraterrestrial example, we turn to digital simulations. Um, I was working with a group that uses digital simulations of evolving life to study how mutations happen, how selection happens, and the mathematics of evolution. And it turns out that I was able to take these software tools and apply them to the study of this question of the chemistry of life versus non-life by looking at bits of computer code as if they were bits of chemistry. So the bits of uh, computer code or lines of computer code essentially become the molecules of another system. And I wanted to see if the evolution of life in this digital context produced essentially the same biosignature as evolved life in a terrestrial chemical context. And it turns out that it does. The result was quite strong and I was very pleased because um, it made for a pretty nice thesis. Uh, so then I turned to electronic publication in order to reinforce two of science's core values, which are that all research should be reproducible 
and all research should be verifiable. So since this was a software experiment, in the electronic component of my thesis, I was able to include the actual software and the configuration files. So now any scientist or any person, in fact, with a computer can download my thesis, extract the data files containing the software, and rerun my exact experiments to see exactly what happens and whether or not my analysis was correct. Moreover, since the, the software is open source, they can go into the source code and examine the software itself to make sure there aren't any flaws that led to um, a false positive or, or an inaccurate signal. Um, I believe that this sort of verifiability is very important for scientific publications, and so particularly in the case of research that uses software for its experiments or its analysis, I think it would be a very good idea for scientists to begin including software, configuration files, and these sort of things in their scientific publications. So in conclusion, I think electronic media is very important for publication, and particularly in scientific publication. Um, I'm glad to see electronic theses as a medium for this and hope that they will lead us forward in producing more reproducible and more verifiable scientific publications in the future. Um, with that, I'd again like to thank the NDLTD and the Awards Committee for presenting me with this uh, award. I'd like to thank Adobe Incorporated for sponsoring the award and the staff of the Caltech Library for recognizing my thesis and nominating it for the award and the staff of Caltech Media Services for helping me record this presentation. Thank you.